that I can, oh my gosh, there's illustrations. How did I not know this? Oh my goodness. <laughs> Hello my loves, thank you for joining me, it's Kirsten and we are doing a book haul video, a rather large book haul video. Now disclaimer, this is not going to include any of the books that I picked up at Yuck, seeing as I do have a separate video for that, so I will just have that linked below if you're interested. These are books that I have acquired over the last two months. I'm not trying to justify this in any way, I love buying books, I love getting books, I love being able to look at my shelves and seeing a range of books to pick up that I haven't even read yet, and I also do read quite a large amount, so as much as 20 books can seem like a ridiculous amount, plus the ones that I got at Yelp, it actually is isn't for me because I on average read about 10 books a month anyway so considering how many books I actually read in June I've actually read more than what I've hauled this time around which is pretty impressive. Anyway let's just get straight to all the books that I got. Starting off with one that was actually gifted to me by my mum and that is Jane Austen's Letters My Dear Cassandra. So these are her letters to her sister and I'm in love with this. I am so excited to read it. So these are selected letters, it's not all of them, across six major events in Jane Austen's life including the ones where her first book got published. I want to read more about Jane Austen and picking up non-fiction about her because I love her books so much and so this my mum found it in a charity shop and I am just in love, absolutely in love. Alongside all of the letters you do also have different artwork and things that would have been around during the time that the author has chosen to go alongside all of these letters so yeah I think this is just going to be a beautiful one to read and probably one that I won't read in like a couple of sittings but something that I take my time and maybe just read a letter every so often. It's so beautiful so I'm very excited. These books are in no particular order by the way. Uh, so we've got The Secrets of Drearcliff Grange School by Kim Newman. This is one that I'm not going to talk too much about because I did did do a book shopping video in London, again I'll have that linked below, but this is one that I found for 99 pence in Forbidden Planet, was drew in by the cover and the fact that it was 99 pence. Literally just the first bit intrigued me, which was a week after her mother found her sleeping on the ceiling, Amy Tomset is delivered to her new school in Somerset. That, that was it, absolutely it. Let's do the first line thing, let's see how many of these I actually remember it for. So, a week after mother found her sleeping on the ceiling, Amy Thompson was delivered to her new school, like a parcel. Okay, so basically what was on the back. I'm just hoping for some good gothic -y vibes. That's the hope. And we have a book that I recently read and loved, and that is A Court of Silver Flames by Sarah J Mars. This is the paperback version, which I pre-ordered because I had given my hardback version to my sister, which in all honesty, I knew I was gonna buy both the hardback and the paperback version because my collection is in paperback, so I didn't want just one book in the series being hardback, and seeing as my sister's getting back into Sarah J Mars, I gave that one to her. Absolutely loved this book. It's the fourth book in the A Court of Thorns and Roses series, this time following Nesta, which is Feyre's sister, a person who a lot of people don't like but is my favourite character. And this is basically just Nesta's journey back from the brink after dealing with everything that she's had to go through in that first trilogy and having a look into how much that has impacted her, the struggle that she has to come back to herself, to even find out who she actually is and just try and lose some of that anger which she's held on to for such a long time as well as making friends along the way. It's a really, really good book. I love this one. I I didn't read the first sentence in that one. Should we, even though I've read that one? Let's do it anyway. See if we're getting already. And we're only in the second book in. The black water nipping at her thrashing hills was freezing. And that makes a lot of sense if you've read the books. Which, it being the fourth in a series, you'd think you would have read up to that one if you're interested in it, but um, Anyway, moving on, we have The Hand on the Wall by Maureen Johnson. This is the third book in the Truly Devious series. And I read this as the last book to read in June or something around that time. Again, absolutely loved this one. I, mm, I'm not gonna go too much in depth because it was in my wrap up videos and my vlog, but I'll have to admit, there was part of this where I got really excited because of all the mentions too, and then there were none by Agatha Christie. I feel like it was a bit misleading because we didn't get a lot of murder mystery in this. It was definitely more just a tying up the first two books, finishing everything up, and just, yeah, just tidying up all the loose ends. Uh, so there wasn't as much murder mystery 
in this, which is which is the only downside that I've got to this one. Oh, it does have a really cool map though. The snow had been falling for hours, drifting past the windows, settling on the sill, forming little landscapes that mimicked the mountains in the distance. This is a snowy setting, by the way, although that was in the past because you have two timelines in this. But again, not going to go into massive detail because I've been talking about it a lot lately. Then we have a book that I picked up for free, and that is The Binding by Bridget Collins. And I don't know much about this one apart from the fact that it looked pretty, had purple sprayed edges, and so I decided to get it. My mum also recently got this book from a charity shop and she showed me and I was like, oh, I have that one upstairs. But this one is Emmett Farmer is a binder's apprentice. His job is to handcraft beautiful books and within each to capture something unique and extraordinary, a memory. If you have something you want to forget or a secret to hide, he can bind it and you will never have to remember the pain it caused. That sounds really intriguing. I liked that. This is why I picked it up because obviously a book about books, hello, of course. And the fact that you can just give your memories and have them put inside a book sounds so intriguing. So yeah, I don't know when I'll get round to this one, but it is one that I just think is absolutely stunning. Premise did sound intriguing. Oh look, you've even got your illustrations. Okay, so when the letter came, I was out in the fields binding up my last sheaf of wheat with hands that were shaking so much I could hardly tie the knot. Fair enough. From that same place that I got the binding, because it's kind of like a book swap situation that goes on at my local Tesco's. I also picked up The Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Selinger. I've got no idea what this is about and there's no synopsis on the back. I just know that it's a really popular book. Generally tends to be taught in schools, although I didn't get taught this one. I got taught different books, but I think it's just an American classic that is always talked about and I just haven't read. So considering it was there for free, why not? If you really want to hear about it, the first thing you'll probably want to know is where I was born and what my lousy childhood was like, and how my parents were occupied and all before they had me, and all that David Copperfield kind of crap. But I don't feel like getting into it, if you want to know the truth. Interesting. I feel like that already sets the tone for this book. I'm intrigued, very intrigued, and it is only a small one, it's less than 200 pages, so yeah. Let me know if you've read this one and what you think of it and what it's actually about because I have no idea. And then at the same time, I also picked up The Wind in the Willows by Kenneth Graham. This again is another classic that I just have not read. And this one I think is just about talking animals. Um, let's see, Far From Fading With Time, Kenneth Graham's classic tale of fantasy has attracted a growing audience in each generation. Uh, Rat, Mole, Badger and the preposterous Mr. Toad have brought delight to many through the years with their odd adventures on and by the river and at the imposing residence of Toad Hall. I still don't know what it's about. So let me know again if you've read this one. This one says, oh there's illustrations on this one as well. That's cool. Okay so the mole had been working very hard all morning spring cleaning his little home. I think it's just going to be a really cute one. I kind of want to read this in autumn when you just want to cozy up with a book. I feel like it's going to be a really nice just heartwarming story. So but again let me know what it's actually about because I don't know. Then we have Lonely Castle in the Mirror by Mizuku Tujimura. I had looked this up, I'm sorry. But this is a book I've really been intrigued about because it is a portal fantasy and this one is translated from the Japanese and I'm really, really excited for this one. I've been wanting to make an effort to read more translated fiction and this is one that's just caught my eye. One, because of the cover, because hello, pink, gorgeous, on the back as well and also because I've been seeing a lot of people talking about this and it does sound like something I would absolutely adore. From what I remember other people talking about this is about a castle that you can access through a mirror that houses really lonely children. They're all on this hunt to find this particular thing and it will grant the person that finds it a wish but then it will make it so that the castle vanishes for everybody. So I think it's going to be a really interesting concept and I just I can't wait. I'm really, really excited to read this. Portal fantasies are one of my favourites. Then we have The First Juniper Tree by Adam E. Holton. And this is one that I saw the author by Southbank. He had this little typewriter and he had this challenge where you would give him two names and a sentence and he would create a short story from that. 
sounded so intriguing but he also had some books next to him this one and I was like what is this about and he told me it's his story that he has written and it's about these two friends that get together one of them just having quit their job and talking about things that are going on, different perceptions people have and just having this kind of debate and conversation and it kind of gave me almost like Mrs Dalloway vibes where we're following these people in just one day and they're thinking about all these different things but in this time it's actually a discussion between two people. The way he was talking about it just made me so intrigued to actually pick it up plus I have to admit the cover really did draw me in but the first line in this, it was cold outside but not as cold as it had been. I feel like I recognise that sentence from somewhere. I can't remember where. I think this is going to be a good one to read when the weather does start getting that bit colder and just having something that I think will be really thought-provoking to read. Okay, let's go with this one. So this is Solo Dance by Lee Kotomi and this is a book that I picked up in Rochester. I loved it in Rochester. I found a beautiful little shop there that sells books and yarn and has a coffee shop and was absolutely amazing day out. I'll have that video linked below as well actually. The cover. It just drew me in so much and again this is translated from the Japanese and this one just kind of grabbed my attention from the back of this where Cho Nori, 27 and originally from Taiwan, is working an office job in Tokyo. While her colleagues worry about the economy, life insurance policies, marriage and children, she is forced to keep her unconventional life hidden, including her sexuality and the violent attack that prompted her move to Japan. It sounds really good and I am moving more into contemporary literary fiction books, especially because as I've mentioned on and off, certain fantasy books I am loving but I think I've realised my niche for fantasy books and now I'm trying to discover my love for other genres as well because I think every genre has something to offer you so I am trying to find lots of different books, different contemporary books as well just to see the sort of things that I like. So this is part of me trying to do that and again translated fiction really wanting to make an active effort to read more of that this year. Year. The way it's written is actually really easy to read. It's quite big writing and about just under 200 pages. And the first sentence is death, just the one word. And the next one is dying. I mean, if that's going to grab your attention, it's something like that. So yeah, I'm intrigued. I, The cover, look how beautiful that cover is. So yeah, we'll see. Again, if you've read this one, let me know, but I haven't seen anyone talking about it and it just, it just intrigues me. Speaking of translated fiction, we also have The Tale of Genji by Lady Murasaka Shikubi. Again, I really need to work on the pronunciations. And this is the authentic first translation of the world's earliest novel. That's the reason why I picked this up because I love the fact that I will be reading the world's earliest novel. And it's a translated book. Just ticks all the boxes and this one is The Tale of Genji follows Prince Genji through his many loves and varied passions. This book has influenced not only generations of courtiers and samurai of the distant past but artists and painters even in modern times. I'm really excited, I'm so so intrigued and again this is another short one, we have an introduction and then the actual story and I just I can't wait, I think this is going to be fascinating. Then we have a book that I've read already and that's The Geisha of Gion by Mineko Iwasaki and this is the true story of Japan's greatest geisha because I read Memoirs of a Geisha. Again, I've talked about this one a lot but I really enjoyed it and it was the first non-fiction book that I've actually read. It sparked this passion for wanting to read more non-fiction. I loved this, I think it was so fascinating to see her actual story and see what it took to actually become a geisha, what being a geisha was actually all about. I think it's great and it's definitely a book that you should read if you have read Memoirs of a Geisha in particular but also in general if you're interested in more of Japan's culture and what it was like give this a try. Then we have a bunch of manga which I again I'm not going to go into in detail because I have it all in that book shopping video but we have Moriarty the Patriot Volume 2 which is following Professor Moriarty before he became the illustrious villain within Sherlock Holmes stories. Then you have Children of the Wales Volume 1 which I picked up because I'm intrigued with the artwork and I'm hoping it's going to be just well obviously a really good manga and then we have our volumes two and three of The Promised Neverland because I read volume one in my 24-hour readathon, loved it, 
thought it was amazing, decided to get the next two. Also part of that video, I also got Mrs. Death, Mrs. Death by Selim Godden. And this is one that I picked up because of Reagan over at Peru's project, who I'll have linked below. She spoke about this one a lot. It really intrigued me. And then I found it in Forbidden Planet. I've forgotten to do it again with the first sentences, but let's just start with this one again. There's a disclaimer right at the start. This book contains dead people. I actually think that's part of the book. Oh, that's really interesting. Oh, now I'm even more intrigued. Yes, thank you. I want to read this. Then we have Boy Parts by Eliza Clark. And this is one that I picked up just because again, I'm looking to expand the genres that I'm reading. And this is the one that keeps cropping up for contemporary literary fiction. Also a bit of like women rage, I think. I picked this up in that London bookshopping video. So I'm not gonna go too much into it. I'm sick in my mouth on the bus into work. Ew, ew, that's gross. Well, I don't know if that's setting the tone for the book or not, but. I mean, that's that's definitely our first line. And the last book I picked up on the same bookshop in London day is If We Were Villains by M.L. Rio. And this is one that I picked up because I want to explore dark academia. It's a genre that I'm super intrigued by, but just been struggling to find the books that I absolutely love. So fingers crossed it's gonna be that. It's kind of more Shakespeare inspired, this one. There's been a murder at the start and I think we're going back from the murder. And it's about these group of students that are all Shakespeare students and are obsessed with it. I sit with my wrists cuffed to the table and I think, but that I am forbid to tell the secrets of my prison house. I could a tale unfold whose lightest word would harrow up thy soul. So we've already got a Shakespeare quote in there. I think it does a good job of setting the tone for what to expect. I have heard some people complaining that there's just constant Shakespeare references. So I'm interested to make up my own mind about this. And then uh, a different day of going to that book swap in my local Tesco's, I found Joseph Conrad Heart of Darkness. Again, this is another classic that I've been really intrigued about. This one I don't know too much about though. I think this one, it's Conrad's haunting tale. Marlowe, a seaman and wanderer, recounts his physical and psychological journey in search of the enigmatic Kurtz. Traveling to the heart of Africa's content, he discovers how Kurtz has gained his position of power and influence over the local people. Marlowe's struggle to fathom his experience involves him in a radical questioning of not only his own nature and values, but the nature and values of his society. I am really intrigued. I've heard some really interesting things about this book. It's a horror classic. I love horror classics. They're probably my favorite part of classic books. Although I have to admit, I am loving my Sherlock and I do love Jane Austen. So maybe I should just say, I just like classics in general, but horror classics was my first love of classics. Right, this introduction is quite long actually. Look how long that introduction is. That's one thing that you'll find with classic books is don't ever be put off by the size of them because the majority of it is all introduction, author's notes, notes on the text. So by the time we've actually got to the start of the book, we've already cut out all of this, which I do find really useful for understanding a bit more in depth about the text, uh, but it's not always a necessity. And then now a cruising yawl swung to her ankle without a flutter of the sails and was at rest. I don't know when I'm gonna get around to it, but I'm hoping that I will get around to it soon. Another classic that I found secondhand, and that's actually a book market by Southbank, and that's Nancy Mitford's Love in a Cold Climate. And this one is one that I was intrigued about because someone was talking about in a YouTube video, but I've forgotten who. And this one is all about our main character who is going out for her season, the wedding season, and she finds it really boring, but that she loves all the dresses and everything like that, decides to go against convention and marry her uncle and doesn't understand why everyone seems very against it. Bit of an unusual one, but I mean, I just, I loved the cover and that that's the reason why I picked this up. It is so beautiful. I am obliged to begin this story with a brief account of the Hampton family because it is necessary to emphasize the fact once and for all that the Hamptons were very grand as well as very rich. There we go, already set in the scene for upper class society, which I actually do quite like that setting in books. Okay, the last six. We are getting there. We have The Ladies of Grace Adieu by Susanna Clark, and this is a collection of short stories that I can, oh my gosh, there's illustrations. How did I not know this? Oh my goodness. I'm even more intrigued. Wow. But this one is all about fairy, how it's never as far away as what we think. This is kind of going back to 
Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell, we have a short story that includes some of the characters from there and the Raven King. Also has other short stories from a Regency clergyman, an 18th century Jewish doctor, and Mary Queen of Scots. So I'm, yeah, I can't wait. I'm really excited. I love Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell. I also love Pierre Nessi. Susanna Clarke is just an amazing writer. So I had to get this and I got this in the same store that I got Solo Dance in Rochester. I just, I loved this. I've been on the hunt for it for a little while, but look at that cover look how gorgeous it is. Susanna Clark is the sort of author that kind of is the foundation of what I like in my fantasy books at the moment so her sort of writing and settings is what I'm looking for in my fantasy books. I also have Sally Rooney's conversation with friends because I recently read Normal People and ended up really liking it and it surprised me because I never thought I'd be the person that liked Sally Rooney but again I am trying to expand my reading, go into more contemporary literary fiction works. Because I enjoyed Normal People I'm going to read conversations and friends. I also plan on reading Beautiful World Where Are You and maybe doing a ranking video. My friend at work has read Conversation with Friends and Normal People because I liked Normal People and she said she preferred this one out of the two so I'm really intrigued to read it and see whether I agree with her. I don't know too much about this one and I don't want to. I don't think I need to talk about it. Sally Rooney is a massive author on YouTube. In general actually she just got massive. Normal People was such a hit. And then continuing on as I said I want to read more non-fiction so I got a Life on Our Planet, My Witness Statement and A Vision for the Future by David Attenborough. I love David Attenborough. His TV shows that he does about our planet, he used to go out and actually film them, now he just narrates them, but his voice is so iconic. When I saw this, I was like, I just, I have to, and this is all about him, his life, what he's found with our world, and the things that we need to do to save it. So yeah, I, I'm so, so excited. There's gorgeous pictures and photographs in here, and I just think it's going to be so interesting. I think this is going to be one that takes me a little bit longer to get through. I'm not going to rush read this one, but I am super excited to actually pick this one up. I've done it again with the first sentence thing. Hang on a minute, because I actually really wanted to do it for this, because I haven't even read the first sentence. I just picked it up. Oh my gosh, even the contents! This is amazing. Oh, there's an introduction. Look, look. This book is beautiful. I can't tell if the introduction is part of this or if it's an actual separate introduction. I'm not sure. We'll go from the first story. Above all, remember this, that magic belongs as much to the heart as to the head and everything which is done should be done from love or joy or righteous anger. I'm so excited. Oh my gosh. This is the most beautiful book. I just, I really need to read this soon. Maybe I'll read it in September. Ooh, maybe. Okay, we'll see. Um, and then conversation with friends. The first line was, Bobby and I first met Melissa at a poetry night in town where we were performing together. Ooh, poetry. That sounds interesting. And then this one, which is the non-fiction one. Pripyat in the Ukraine is a place unlike anywhere else I have ever been. It is a place of utter despair. That's just the introduction. Wow. Oh, okay. So the first bit is, as I write this, I am 94. I have had the most extraordinary life. Okay, I'm excited, can't wait. Okay, then we have Nettle and Bone by T. Kingfisher. I am going to be buddy reading this in August with Ellie from Bibbidi Bobbidi Books. I will have her linked below. She is an absolutely lovely person. I love her videos. And this one I've recently spoke about, but I'm excited for it. It kind of reminds me of like a fairy tale-esque, but we have a demon possessed chicken. I want to read it for the chicken. I don't know too much else about this. I know there's sisters, one of them trying to save the other one from this really horrible marriage and there's politics and magic involved but a demon possessed chicken that's what sold it anyway the first line in this one oh we have a random little skull anyway the trees were full of crows and the woods were full of madmen okay I'm intrigued. I can't wait to read this. I think it's going great. I haven't done a buddy read in ages. Then I got The Beautiful Ones by Silvia Moreno-Garcia and this is again because of Reagan. I will have her channel linked below as I've already said. But she loved this one and it sounds like the exact type of fantasy book that I'm looking for because we're set in like Regency England. I don't even know if it is England but it's that Regency setting and it's all about this person called Nina who is a psychic as well. She has telekinetic 
powers, how that kind of influences her in her season of coming out, how she gets taken by somebody else who has telekinetic powers and I just I'm really intrigued. The way Regan spoke about this one really can't wait to read. I think that setting where it's going to be like almost like a Jane Austen book setting but with a slight fantasy element to it. Perfect. Okay so chapter one. Hector was like a castaway who had washed up on a room of velvet curtains and marble floors. Okay and the final final book is another non-fiction and we have a Zelda by Nancy Milford and this is all about Zelda Fitzgerald. So F. Scott Fitzgerald's wife her story, how she came to marry him, and what actually happened in quite a turbulent marriage, how she ended up in an asylum put there by F. Scott Fitzgerald. I was intrigued by this because of Aunt Carly, who again I'll have her channel linked below. She was talking about how F. Scott Fitzgerald basically plagiarised Zelda for his books. She did a whole separate video talking about it and then I found this non-fiction book and I'm so intrigued because obviously F. Scott Fitzgerald is famous for things like The Great Gatsby, The Beautiful and the Damned. I've only read The Great Gatsby and I want to read more of his works but before I do I want to read this book so that I can actually get a full understanding of what's happening and the argument that people have for the fact that F. Scott Fitzgerald has plagiarised his wife and then when she was speaking out against it put her in an asylum. Sounds so horrible and fascinating and something that I wish I'd been taught at school when I was learning about The Great Gatsby. I feel like it at least should have been mentioned that this was an argument that was going around, especially because it's unfair that Zelda is someone that I've never even thought about until I saw that video. And yet if she was the main inspiration or even if she was actually plagiarised, like that's something we should know. So I'm I'm really intrigued by this one. I think it's going to be quite a hard hitting story because I know from what Aunt Carly was saying that their marriage was definitely a toxic one. If there was a confederate establishment in the deep south, Zelda Sayer came from the heart of it. There we go. Oh, this is going to be quite a hard read. The writing is absolutely teeny tiny, but I'm I'm really intrigued. I think it's going to be so interesting. We've also got different like drawings and notes, photographs. I just, yeah, I'm really, really intrigued by this. So there we have it at last. I think I spoke quite a lot in this and I was thinking to myself, you know, what, a few of these books I don't even need to talk much about because I've got whole videos where I actually went in depth to them. So it's going to be a quick video. I've been talking for over 30 minutes. Not so quick. Am we surprised? No, because I ramble a lot. But I will have all those videos that I was talking about where I do go more into depth with some of those books. I'll have those linked below so if you are intrigued do check those out as well as anyone that I've mentioned, their YouTube channels, that will all be in the description below. So thank you so much for making it this far. Do let me know what's a recent book that you've acquired or if you've read any of these, your thoughts on any of them. I'm I can't wait. I think I've got a great selection of books to be choosing from for the next few months. Very excited for all of these. I don't even know what emoji to put. Let's just either go with any book emoji or a shopping bag, something like that to signify because we did do quite a bit of shopping over the last couple of months, mainly because I have been doing dedicated book shopping videos. And also I can't help it when I see books that I'm interested in. I just anyway <laughs> thank you so much for watching if you have enjoyed it don't forget to give it that thumbs up subscribe a comment to let me know especially if you don't know what to put just put that emoji it really does help the channel out all my social media links will be linked below and i will of course catch you in the next one mm -hmm.